Hey everyone, um, I'm here to give you a, a status update on the progress of the Mesh Deformer Clothing Tailor project. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank everyone for providing me feedback. Uh, it's very much appreciated. Um, I did my best to track down all your comments across all the possible Second Life forums uh, <laughs> and read them all. Um, I can't, I can't possibly answer all of you guys, so uh, I apologize for that. Although I do want to thank the people who do step in to answer questions for me. Um, that's that's very helpful, uh, especially when, uh, especially when you're uh, right. Um, less less so when the answers you're giving are wrong. But <laughs> um, so, uh, what do I want to talk about? There are a lot of people who are concerned about uh, the body still poking through in various situations on various pieces of clothing. Um, I would say uh, the bulk of the issues I saw were related to the fact that the mesh clothing wasn't designed with the deformer in mind. Um, and there's some, there's some misunderstanding about what that designing that process is as well. Um, uh, right now, for the existing code base, the clothing needs to be modeled to the default female form. So when you create a new shape in Second Life, the thing that comes out by default is the thing you want to uh, shape your clothing to. Um, so, like, I saw a bunch of feedback where people would say, my clothing looks great before the, I have the deformer on, and it looks terrible after. And, well, um, yeah, if if your clothing is, like, oversized and you're oversized, then then the deformer is going to make it double oversized. Uh, so that's, that's, not, that's not the way to use it. Um, another issue that comes up uh, that uh, I don't think many people realize is that uh, the clothing needs to have enough geometric detail in uh, the flexing areas to accommodate these new shapes. So sometimes, you know, the clothing poking through, or the body poking through is, is a result of, of um, you know, efficient geometry, but geometry that needs to bend in a particular place, and there are no vertices there to, to bend. Um, so, the short answer is, uh, look at clothing that was designed with this tool in mind, that was tested with this tool. Um, that is the real test of how well this tool works, okay? Um, and there are a good number of designers out there who understand this process, and will hopefully uh, uh, be and already have started producing clothing uh, that test it. Um, okay, other topics here on my list. Um, the Boolean switch. Um, yeah, we need the Boolean switch. Uh, my gun example from last video was a terrible one. You know, you don't, you, you never want your guns to bend, so you don't rig them at all. Um, yeah, uh, but there are lots of examples of times when you don't want the deformer to uh, touch your meshes. Uh, I think the worst case I've seen is when the meshes extend beyond the the body's extremities, when meshes go out past the ends of the hands, when meshes go out past the ends of the toes, um, and that's because uh, the Second Life avatar has morphs on the hands, say, to bend the fingers in, right? Um, and those kinds of morphs are exactly the kinds of things that are going to make this look bad. Uh, that's, it's, it's, not, it's not a good idea to uh, use a deformer like this uh, with those morphs. So we need to be able to turn it off, um, and we will. Uh, other people are suggesting we, in addition to that boolean, we have other parameters, like say an overall strength parameter, or a falloff parameter, or, you know, and these are all good ideas, I think these could all be extremely useful, but I don't want to, I don't want to get into them yet. Uh, I don't, uh, I want this to be, I want this to be, uh, the simplest possible version of the deformer that it can be and still get the job done. Um, if we start adding these other things in, then we're going to delay the launch, and worse yet, we're going to 
we're going to get into lots of uh, discussions about what's the best way to lay out these parameters and, and stuff like that. Uh, I would rather just uh, cut that off and save that for version 2, you know. Um, some people are seeing what they describe as crumpling, okay. Um, yeah, um, I see something too, I don't know that we're calling that what you're calling crumpling is what I'm seeing as crumpling. We need to uh, we need to better define that word and get some specific examples of it. Um, but some of it uh, is from th the bad morphs on the Second Life Avatar. Um, uh, I haven't uh, in my development career I haven't spent that much time looking at the Second Life Avatar. Uh, I've never really designed clothes, uh, so I had you know no no real good handle on what was going on. Um, so it was a complete surprise to me when uh, a grid, a rectangle of vertices on your skin would move together independent of the vertices around it when the breasts were made bigger, you know? Almost as if, like, uh, a pat, a, a little metal plate were shifting. Uh, uh, that's weird, <laughs> in my mind. Uh, and I sympathize with the clothing designers who have put up with, with these uh, in the past. Unfortunately, uh, because we're using these exact same morphs for the basis of our deformer, um, we're going to get exactly the same kind of bad motion, uh, bad uh, deformation um, uh, when these morphs are applied. Uh, okay, I think that's that's a good that's a good rundown of the things I wanted to talk about. Um, uh, I want to also say where we're going from here. Um, in the next in the next uh, release of the code, which isn't going to be as soon as I like. Uh, I uh, work-wise, I am slammed right now. Um, so it's it's going to be a, a I don't know, longer than I would like. I, I, I don't want to speculate right now. Uh, but in the next version, what I want to have are these four things. Um, one, that Boolean control. That'll be a Boolean variable on the mesh asset, which is set at mesh upload time, that tells the deformer whether or not to deform this mesh. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, second thing I want to do is uh, accelerate the, uh, the uh, tape, the the setup, the setup. Uh, so when you first put on a mesh that's going to be deforming, there's there's this setup that occurs that makes uh, the subsequent stuff faster. And I think in the last video I tried to show you guys the fast timers, and that went poorly. Maybe I can do a better job this time. Yeah, here's the deformer. Okay, so right now we can see uh, it's taken about one uh, one millisecond of frame, um, and it is pretty much deforming once a well. Uh, what's going on is we have, uh, I am speaking, so I'm getting my speech gestures. I also have avatar physics on, so it's, the deformer is getting called a lot, you know. Uh, and I have my avatar physics uh, preference turned up. Uh, so this isn't so bad. Uh, but what is bad is that setup time. Um, in the last video, it took a second to set up uh, the mesh I had. I think it was this mesh, actually, uh, the fluffy mesh. Um, and that's too long. So maybe an octree in there. Uh, something something to... Right now it's an n-squared algorithm, for those of you who understand that. Uh, I just wanted to get it as simple as possible, and uh, it it's slow. <laughs> so octree, some kind of accelerator. I don't know what yet, but something. Uh, third, we need a base male shape, as well as the base female shape, because I agree it's, it, it's crazy to make uh, uh, designers... Uh, use a female shape when they're making male clothing, right? So uh, chances are, chances are that will be the default male shape, which is the shape you get when you create a new shape uh, um, from scratch and then click the male button. Um, so if you want to design clothing against that guy, and then the last change I want to make is with the morph weighting. Uh, right now, we look at only the closest vertex on the avatar uh, for our deformation. Um, and that might be contributing to what people call uh, clumping as well. Um, at the very least, it, it caused, 
I think it gives an abrasive sort of fractured look. So what we're going to do is uh, take, instead of just the one closest vertex, the, the three closest or the n closest and weight them by distance and see what that looks like. Um, okay. Uh, only other thing I want to say now is uh, for feedback on this uh, video, um, in the past, or in the last video, I suggested that we do it over on uh, Second Life's Jira. Um, that didn't go so well because uh, I, f I felt that uh, I, f I felt that some of I felt that some of the comments were were treated inappropriately. Um, uh, I know you guys did too. So what we what I want to do now is I guess try it on my blog. Um, I'm going to post this video to my blog, and uh, there will be a comment section at the end of it. So just leave leave your comments there, and I promise to read them. Uh, probably won't reply to them individually, though. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, that's it. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, take care, guys, and uh, uh, I'll see you later.